Last season, UCF didn't have to travel very far for their first bowl game, the Cure Bowl. Join CBS Sports Network for the Auto Nation Cure Bowl coming up this December, only on the 24-hour home of CBS Sports. And remember, October is Breast Cancer Awareness Month. It was Arkansas State and UCF here in Orlando. Kendall Sanders on the attack. Three touchdowns. Arkansas State had a 31-13 win in the second Cure Bowl, number three coming up, not only here in Orlando, but also here on CBS Sports Network. ECU trailing 21-7. Little reverse flip. This is Farrier gets the edge. Farrier inside the 45 to the 43-yard line. And that's a gain of 14 yards. Farrier gets up. And down he goes. That's the kind of exciting offense you need. The combat, an exciting, fast defense. Get those guys flowing one way. Not so fast for coming the other way. And you see Thomas Cirque right here making a great block. You're really, when you're 6'4", 220, 230, as a quarterback, you can go block a couple guys. Farrier out of Lake Nona High School in Orlando here. It just shows you how deep the talent here in this state is. A lot of teams in the American have players from all over Florida. Obviously, UCF has used a, a lot of Florida kids, a lot of South Florida kids, Miami. Hey, don't forget about Central Florida now. I know. Your boys from Central Florida, from Tampa, and I take great pride. I think the, the best recruits definitely come from the state of Florida. I know I'm, looking Texas. For, I'm looking for a plant high school product out there. Yeah, we got some all play. over the place. All right, there's that last hit. That, that's certainly not... Scotty Montgomery knows he doesn't have a deep bench he's missing starters in a rebuilding process depth is one of the things that suffers early first and ten pirates on the move sir he can run it he's a big man and Cirque is inside the 40 to the 38 yard line that's a gain of five Big kid, but you still don't want your quarterback taking hits like this. He's been injured a lot. Achilles injuries. Little something to his elbow. That's why you see the sleeve on there. Jumping into a pile in practice, actually. Something you're taught not to do as a quarterback. But he's a big kid. He's a competitor. But he needs to take care of his body as well. Second down, five. This time he'll hand it off. And... And right That's how and how with a gain of maybe one. Great defensive pressure, but for ECU right now, it's four down territory. You see Pat Jasinski in there making a great play, reading it out. But, but for ECU, four down territory, you don't have to get it all right now. Get a couple of yards, it's be, it'd be great to get the first, but if you get it fourth and two, fourth and one, get a manageable down. You get a big quarterback and a big running back and then get you the first down. That shake and shimmy is why they call this place the bounce house. Cirque hit as he throws a deep shot and he overthrows everyone. And let's see what ECU does here on fourth down and four. And this is something UCF wants to do and this is something ECU needs to get better at, protecting their quarterback. You're not going to be accurate when you, guys, you have guys around your legs, around your arm. It's, it's fourth down and short, about four or five right here. You're too far for field goal. You got a chance to make a first down, and you got you to get the ball rolling. You got to get some excitement on offense. Good drive going right now, but you have to keep up. You got to match this UCF offense. And ECU is going to take a timeout. They had trouble Second getting personnel. Second timeout of the half. 30-second timeout. On the field. And so Scotty Montgomery, Tony Peterson is the offensive coordinator. See what they dial up on fourth down and four. Just getting things lined up and getting it right has been an issue so a far. Lot, a lot of miscues, a lot of drop passes. Thomas Cirk has been a little inaccurate tonight. I was, I was saying before the game, if he has time in the pocket, he can't be an accurate quarterback. He's had time throughout this game to make accurate throws. He's been a little off. But then also the receiver's got to make some catches. And you see there are too many drops tonight. This, the team, they said they're one step away. They're one play away. And you see it tonight early on, these guys dropping balls, being just a hair off accuracy-wise from the quarterback. 
they just got to clean those up, and they're going to be able to move the ball a little bit more cleanly up and down the field. Fourth down, four. Movement. And flags. And there's another miscue right there. Full start. Offense, number 28. Five-yard penalty. Fourth down. Now you got to punt the ball at this situation. They're going to bring the punters on, the punt unit. And that's a big mistake there. You have an opportunity to get a first down, continue the drive. Now you're punting the ball. Hopefully get a good punt to pin it back, but you can't jump off sides. You had two guys move early. And think about Montgomery. He played at Duke. He's been coaching with David Cutcliffe. That's as uh, precise an offense and a football team as you'll find. And he's trying to instill that same thing here at ECU. Young guys, a lot of young guys. The hype of playing the number 22 team in the country kind of scares you a little bit. And uh, they just got to settle down. They got to calm their nerves, play a little bit more discipline. Good punt by Austin Barnes. Number 22, UCF, gets the football again up 21-7 in a couple laps. This is a, uh, in terms of tailgating as well around the stadium, this is a Power 5 tailgate game here in Orlando with the Knights. Being an SEC guy, we're known for our tailgating, but as we were coming up to the stadium today, you're right. There are people, kids all over the place, alumni all over the place. I think the excitement of being the number two team, 22 team in the country brought a few more people out. All right, UCF backed up here, and they'll hand it off to Cordarian Richardson, the freshman out of Memphis. Yeah, you're really going to see Cordarian, Cordarian more in short yardage. He's a big kid, 240, 250 pounds, can kind of bulldoze his way, and uh, he did that right there again four. We saw Robert Prunty, who has taken over as the defensive coordinator. Clock issues again. Please reset the game clock to 1231. They'll start on my ready. Thank you. And for Prunty right now, you got to find ways to get after this quarterback. Mackenzie Milton is just standing in the pocket all day, picking his defense apart. Let's see if he's going to mix up. At some point in this game, you got to bring some pressure. You got to bring a fifth and sixth rusher. Richardson again. Cross the 10. Now to the 12. And it's third down. And a long two, maybe three here. Once again, you got Cordarian in the background, in the backfield, big kid. Let's run the ball right there. And it is Milton, and he stopped and sacked. And a big loss, Devin Sutton, the sophomore. Remember, he came out with an injury. Sutton comes up with a big play here. Once again, a big third down stop for this defense. No one's open downfield. It's a solid tackle in the backfield. And we said earlier, Sutton need to get back. He got banged up a little bit early. They took him out. But he's a big playmaker in the slot. Coming up, making tackles, being able to cover a slot receiver as well. And right here, they should get great field position. Back them up to about the 10-yard line. Hopefully get in plus territory here after the punt return. Mac Loudermilk, the junior, to punt it away. Quay Johnson, fair catch called for. It's deflected, and somehow he's able to grab it and secure it at the 40-yard line. In Orlando tonight, UCF, a 21-7 start. Yeah, another drop right here. Nate Evans comes in and knocks it loose with a big hit. But once again, another miscue. We're going to keep counting these drops, inaccuracy in the past games, penalties, and, and this is just another costly drop. You get a position. It's not a big play, but you get a position to get third and four, third and five. Looks a lot better than third and nine, third and ten. 0 for 3 on third down. It's the fourth drop of the night for ECU. Cirque has weapons, but he needs help from those weapons. You get man coverage once again on the outside. Blitz coming, Cirque unloads, deflected incomplete. Someone got a hand on it. Tony Garad, the senior out of Tampa, was the closest to it. Got quick slants going on the outside. 
You just gotta, as Tony Garrard, get your big mug up there, get your big paw up there and knock it down. We got a quick game going, but as an offensive line, if you got two slants going on the outside, quick hitters versus man coverage, you have to cut those guys. If you don't cut them, the ball, the, the trajectory of the ball is not gonna be high enough to complete it over these big defense linemen. I know it's not sexy, but two big nights from the punters. This is Austin Barnes. Hughes has to get out of the way, and Barnes pins this one inside the five for the second time tonight. Yeah, these punters right now, like you said, both these guys have had a great night knocking the opponents inside the 20. Slash team. What if people had a battery level icon, like on your phone? You'd see a lot of us walking around all day in need of a recharge. Thankfully, there's great tasting five hour energy. Because just one sugar free, four calorie vitamin packed five hour energy shot can recharge your batteries all the way back to 100% fast. And isn't life better at 100%? Five hour energy. Get back to 100%. Have a vision for the future. A world without accidents. To get there, we're advancing safety technology, designed not only to automatically brake, but also actively steer. This is the most sophisticated Lexus safety system ever. And a preview of what's to come. Experience driver first innovation. Experience amazing. your game day with the new hash brown scramble bowl from chick-fil-a chase sapphire reserve eye on college football group of five bid to a new year's six three undefeated in the uh, group of five teams and we've got number 19 san diego state against boise state coming up right after this one as well ucf and usf repping the american freaky friday clemson at syracuse Washington State couldn't do anything right. And how about Miami getting up off the canvas and coming back to beat Georgia Tech 25-24? Yeah, it's going to be an exciting second half of the football season. A lot of these schools, these smaller schools, making a name for themselves. A lot of big upsets. It's just fun. You turn on the TV on Friday night, Saturday night, a lot of great football going on. First and 10, quick throw, Milton. A strike on the sideline to Traquan Smith. Let's go down to Cassie McKinney. Cassie? Yeah, Rich, ECU defensive coordinator Robert Prunty has been so supportive of his defense. He's been huddling them up, telling them this is a process. Stay with it. Control what you can. Nothing is going to be perfect. Just do your best. All I want is your best. Well, they've had their moments, Cassie. ECU has made some stops. Remember, this is the highest scoring offense in college football. Richardson is loose. And Richardson across the 30 spills out to the 33-yard line. Richardson for a big back, big guy back there, showing off his speed a little bit right now. Proving to these coaches, he's not just a bulldozer you're going you're gonna to use in third and fourth, fourth and short, but he can get the ball in first and ten and kind of show some speed down the field. First and ten here. Cordarian Richardson again to the 40. Let's head to our New York studio for a Best Western update. Guys, Damian Harris with a four-yard touchdown run. He had a 75-yard touchdown run on the first play from scrimmage. Second quarter, number one Alabama leads Arkansas, 17-0. All right, thank you, Brett. 21-7, we'll see you at halftime. 
Our Verizon halftime report wide open, down the middle. That's Cam Stewart into ECU territory, down to the 18-yard line. Once again, you keep running the play action, the play action. All of a sudden now, these linebackers, these safeties are biting up on it. You got a big play down the field. Cam Stewart, a guy that started last year, now with all these young freshman receivers coming in playing well, hasn't been getting as much playing time as many catches, but still a very talented kid. And that, look, that's one of the impressive things watching this offense. Milton has completed passes to running backs, to wide receivers, to slot receivers, to tight ends. He even completed a touchdown to a defensive end. Remember, Jameis Pittman came in. There's just talent all over the place. I mean, you got the receivers, you got talented tight ends. Jordan Aikens, one of the most talented tight ends in the country. And you got just, you have depth up and down the receiving court. And the great thing for these guys, a lot of them are freshmen, juniors, some sophomores, but a lot of young guys that have been getting a lot of playing time and going to continue getting better. That's a true freshman coming off the field for ECU. Devondre Robinson, who got the start against this high-octane UCF offense. Think Oregon Ducks fueled with Florida talent and a few twists. Scott Frost, the offensive coordinator at Oregon, for getting this job here in Orlando. Milton under pressure, end zone! And he just overshot Smith, his junior wide receiver. One of the few miscues we've seen from Mackenzie Millen tonight. Does a great job, Smith on the outside, stacking his DB, stacking the DB out there. Got to put it on a guy in the back of the end zone. These guys have been connecting all year long. A lot of touchdowns, a lot of big plays. One of the very few misses you'll see from those two. Still at the 18. Second down, 10. Milton again. Caught. Is he in? No. At the one. Ball popped loose on the reach. Otis Anderson, the catch. And some second effort. A little scary throw right there, throwing up in the coverage. When you got talented guys like Otis out there making acrobatic grabs like that, you can kind of afford to do that as a, as a QB. I don't see Pittman out there at fullback. I don't see any trick plays coming along. The previous play is under review. Now you could be reviewing for a couple things here. You could be reviewing for... I don't think the review for a touchdown. I think it's the completion of the catch. Does he have possession through the catch, hitting the ground? It's kind of that Des Bryant rule that happened a few years ago in the playoffs where the Cowboys went to extend for the end zone and fumbled it. But right there, you see butts down. So they could actually look for the touchdown as well. If it is a completion and they see touchdown, they can call it a touchdown. Yeah, his butt's down. I think he's just short, though, of getting into the end zone. I think it's going to be placed at the half-yard line. He does a great job extending for the end zone. Butt's down now. Ball is just starting to get out of his reach. So, from what you've seen, catch or no catch? It's a catch. He's down. Still has possession of the ball when it's still in his hands. I don't think he reaches it over in time for a touchdown. But this is going to be the best look right here. You'll see drop, butt down. Ball is not crossed. Butt's already down, though. Down to get the ball about the half-yard line. I don't think there's enough evidence there to call it a touchdown. Because the elbow may have hit along with the... Uh, After review, the ruling on the field is confirmed. The runner was down on the one-yard line. First down. Call confirmed. And Scotty Montgomery and ECU on their heels right now. Number 22, UCF, the Knights, 4-0. Remember, they had a game canceled by a hurricane, and that was Georgia Tech. They will not be able to make that game up. Get your big running back back there. Illegal substitution, defense, 12 men in formation. After this is the goal, first down. Listen, when you're struggling defensively, maybe you just try to sneak a 12th guy out there, what they're trying to do, but 
Uh, you got to find some way to stop him on offense, and I guess the 12th guy out there would uh, would do the trick a little bit. Not sure it would slow this offense down. No, I don't think anything can slow this offense down tonight. Cordarian Richardson in the backfield. Richardson. No, it's Milton. He'll keep it. He'll score. Yeah, UCF is in the end zone for the fourth time here in the first half. Great read right here. Everyone's buying. You got the big back. And Richardson in the backfield, everyone's thinking it's going to be a dive, dive, dive. A little zone read. Mackenzie Millen reads it right and walks in the end zone. That's a, uh, one of the easiest rushing touchdowns he'll get all year. Catch from Otis right here, getting the ball down to the one. Then Mackenzie Millen with a great read to rock it into the end zone. A half there from Mackenzie Milton and UCF. Verizon halftime reports coming up. Brent Stover, Houston Nutt, Christian Fourier from our CBS Sports Network studios in New York. A look around college football with a preview. Here is Aaron Murray and his look around what you got yeah right now Alabama until someone knocks him off the throne best team in the country Notre Dame big loss of Georgia early in the season but have looked great and then Miami heading to this season maybe a third fourth best team in the ACC with Clemson's loss last night Miami continues to find ways to win they're looking great right now and Florida State I know they lost their quarterback first game of the season versus Alabama but you think with all the talent they have defensively offensively that they can kind of make up for that and play a little bit better I know they won today versus Duke, but still have not been impressive so far this season. You think the comeback gets Miami a little bit more on the radar? Definitely gets them on the radar. That team, they'll be in top 10 right now. Probably the best team in the ACC with Clemson's loss. This is Trevon Brown out to the 27-yard line. Let's go to New York and Brent Stover. Brent? I got a story for you. Drew Locke, Emmanuel Hall, 63-yard touchdown. Rich Waltz, the Missouri Tigers are tied with the fourth-ranked Dogs. As you know, Aaron Murray ain't walking down that tunnel for Georgia. No, and Brent, he wore a red tie tonight, too. I did. I'll try to send some love up to Athens, Georgia. Those Missouri Tigers can get a little feisty when they come to Athens. 7.43 left first half. Impressive first half for the number 22 team in the country, UCF. This is ECU, the Pirates, and Thomas Sirk. And that one behind his receiver, though in the hands of Taj Deans, and he couldn't hold it. Ball's a little off. Back hip allows allows Mike Hughes to kind of make a break on it and get his hands in there. You have to put that on the front pad of your receiver. If he's able to make that catch and turn up the field, you put it behind him, DB's able to make a chance, be able to have a chance to go and knock that ball down. There have been some drop throws on good throws. There have been some throws that weren't so good and it didn't hook up. Yeah. Second down and 10. Circus hit, short throw, it's picked off. That is Trey Neal to the 10, to the house. Trey Neal, touchdown. Once again, you see Titus Davis coming to the bottom of your screen. And as a QB, if you're getting hit like that, the ball is just not going to come out smooth. Right in the hands of Trey Neal. Does a great job of breaking on. They're playing man coverage with a safety deep, kind of eyeing the quarterback. Makes a great play on the ball after the kind of a low pass. And now the UCF defense gets on the board. Not just the highest scoring offense in NCAA football. There are flags down, but the defense chips in every now and then as well. There are five flags on the field.
five of the eight officials through laundry. I think something happened. I think it's a good indication that uh, someone wasn't doing what they were supposed to be doing. Neil, a junior out of Atlanta. Cirque hit as he threw. That's something you've been seeing all year with Cirque. Getting pressure, guys in his face, throwing while getting brought to the ground. And I don't care who you are as a quarterback, you're not going to be accurate when you're getting knocked around like back like there. You start to get happy feet, balls start to flutter. When you get a fast defense like that, if you're even a little bit off, they're going to make a play. There are offsetting fouls on the play. After the play, personal foul, defense number 56. Personal foul, offense. Those penalties offset. And the kickoff. Trey Neal with a pick and a 49 yard return for a touchdown. Titus Davis on the outside. We're going to see a little TE stunt. Tackles coming out, defensive end coming in. Offensive line doesn't pick it up fast enough. All of a sudden you're getting a hit on your quarterback and the ball just sputters out of his hands right into Trey Neal's hands. The defensive safety does a great job once again, reading the quarterback's eyes, making a great play on the ball. And this defense may had a lot of turnovers, creating a lot of turnovers and they're doing a great job on the offensive side of the football of not turning it over as well. So. You're going to win games if you're getting pick sixes. Right now, a runaway, 35-7. Trevon Brown, two yards in. Well, if they keep this up, they won't be number 22 next week. They'll be higher, and we've got them on CBS Sports Network, another top 25 team. Navy, though, lost a tight one to Memphis today in Annapolis, 3.30 Eastern. And getting ready for the option attack, do you think we'll see Scott Frost running the option for the scout team here in, in Orlando this next week? I tell you what, sitting down in meetings with him yesterday, we kind of looked at each other, and I definitely think he can go out there and play right now. He's a big guy. 6'3", six, 6'4". Six, I mean, he knocked a couple guys out running the option. So uh, I've heard he kind of ran it a little bit in spring ball and fall camp. And it still has the wheels a little bit according to some of the defenders. He was uh, terrific in that offense, in that role as a Nebraska Cornhusker for Tom Osborne. And we showed you the, the lineage of, of coaches that he has worked under. And, and he said he got something from everybody. Bill Walsh was a brilliant offensive mind. He called Osborne his hero in coaching. And then Chip Kelly, he said, was the innovator. He taught him that offense and was fearless with that offense. And he learned a little bit of everything. And that's uh, what he said has made him the head coach that he is right now. That ball is incomplete. Thrown behind the receiver. Quay Johnson, the intended receiver. Kyle Gibson on the coverage. We had deflection here. Burkett getting his fingers up. Once again, a little inaccurate. I know the tip got it off, but you got to find a way with your arm angle, whether it's sidearm, whether it's over the top, finding ways to create a throwing lane with your arm to get the ball to these guys in slants. Because if he can play that, they had a chance to get for a first down. And once again, third and long, you're, you're buying right into what UCF wants defensively. 0-4 on third down. Blitz comes. Cirque goes deep. And that is a tremendous diving catch by Grayson at the 32-yard line. That'll make up for a few drops. Definitely will make up, and they're going to keep playing man-to-man -man coverage. UCS playing man-to-man. -man. They've had success all night. But right there, you give your quarterback some time in the pocket versus man. They have talented receivers. Those guys are able to get on top of their DBs, make a big play down the field. 33 yards into UCF territory at the 33-yard line. Sirk, who has had three surgeries on Achilles, wiping out two of his college years. You see a run here, got a light box. 
There's the run. That's how and Hassan Howe inside the 30 to the 29-yard line. And they're going to do that all night. They're going to check to it. If they see five guys in the box, three defensive linemen, two linebackers, if you're able to put a hat on a hat with your five offensive linemen, they're going to continue checking that run throughout the night. It's just, it looks too good. Scotty Montgomery watching. Last year, three and nine and one and seven in the American. Second and six. And one thing Montgomery told us about Cirque, he coached him at Duke. He had said that this year, despite getting knocked around every Saturday, despite all of the injuries and the losses, Cirque has been a leader. He has not let anybody go down. He has taken responsibility. He is everything that Montgomery hoped he would be coming from Duke to ECU. You would think so, huh? where, he, where he's been in college right now, an older guy, a leader of this football team, the quarterback. He's a professional. He shows up every day ready to rock and roll. There's a catch in traffic. Quade Johnson holds it. And a first down for the Pirates to the 16-yard line. And once you start running the ball, good things happen. You start running it, you're able to utilize the play action off of it then. You had the linebackers flowing, and then it's an easy catch, and then you just got one-on-one -on -one with the safety down the field. Wake up, Nation, let's go! So ECU down big, but on the move. Under five minutes left, first half. Thomas Cirk, the Duke transfer, graduate transfer. On first and ten. And Hassan Howe to the 14-yard line. That's a gain of two. Pat Jasinski, the stop for the Knights. And you look at this UCF defense right now. They're playing a lot of too high, light in the box, six guys in the box. And those safeties are going to have to play great. Those linebackers are going to have to get off blocks if you're not going to bring a safety into the box to help with the run game. There's Griffin out of St. Pete. Once again, a, night, a, a light box defensively. You're going to keep seeing these runs all night if they don't want to put a safety down there. This is Penix with his head down. He gets to the 10, but he's four yards shy of the first down. Third down and four. A couple of third down conversions on this drive. I know it's early in the game here, but... You're down 35-7. It may be four down territory. Trying to get some yards right now, make it a manageable fourth and short. You got to put seven on the board. You can't be killing down there again, only three. Phoenix in the backfield. Third and four. Search throw whistles. And a flag was down. There may have been a false start. False start. <laughs> Offense, number 78. Five-yard penalty. Third down. And that obviously changes the play call of Tony Peterson, the offensive coordinator. Got a little jump. I know it's he got beat a few plays before in the interception on the outside. Gets a little loud here at UCF, but you got to stay disciplined. Once again, miscues on the offensive side of the football. Penalties, drop passes. This team needs to be more disciplined. Now you're in third and long. Before you're in third and manageable, had an opportunity to get an easy first down. Ninth play of the drive. Third down nine, four-man rush. Search throw is caught and held. That's Grayson. He's got the first down. Forward progress to the four. And all of a sudden, the playmakers are starting to make some plays. With the motion to the right, once again, middle of the field's wide open. You see no middle linebacker out there. When the running back jetted to the right, right before the snap, he flew out of there in the middle of the field. It's just asking for someone to take advantage of it. They took advantage of the touchdown pass early in this game. And once again, if that's a better pass, they would have had an opportunity. Cirque needs to get a little bit more accurate tonight. Penix. And this is where you're going to see inside the five-yard line, UCF defense, they're going to load the box. Both safeties are going to be in there. They're going to play tight man-to-man -man coverage on the outside. Those DBs are going to be playing heavy inside leverage forcing the ball to go outside for these outbreaking routes. No gain, second and goal at the UCF four. Darius Pinnock still in there behind Thomas Cert. A lot of guys right there. One-on-one -on, -one on the outside, you gotta take advantage of it. Cert goes deep, corner, caught, no! Johnson couldn't hold it, and again, a throw that seemingly was on the mark. 
is incomplete. Tight coverage by Kyle Gibson right here, but this is what you have to do. One on one, you're gonna have inside leverage. Outbreaking routes are the key. Kyle Gibson just gets his hand in there at the last second, but if you want to score versus this type of defense, those are the routes you need to execute. Those outbreaking routes, the corner routes, maybe a fade on the outside as well, because you're not going to be able to run the ball against this heavy box. Third and goal. Blitz, sir, caught, touchdown. Grayson holds it. And... ECU in the end zone for the second time tonight. If you're looking for baby steps, if you're looking for progress, ECU has made some. And that's a great route right there. Fakes like he's going to run the fade route, gets the DB, Brandon Moore to kind of shuffle his feet, and then breaks across his face. That's beautiful right there. 13th career touchdown catch. And Jake Verity in for the extra point. So after a pick six, Thomas Sirk picks himself up and drives his team length of the field. That's a big way to finish. We're going to see one-on-one -on -one coverage on the outside. We're going to get faking like he's going to run a fade, and he's going to cut across. The goal as a receiver is to get in front of your DB. Show the numbers. Does a great job. DB flips his hips. That's Brandon Moore out there at DB. And Grayson does a great job showing his QB his numbers. That's a big receiver out there. That's the kind of guy you want to throw a slant route to. They're going to play tight man-to-man -man coverage inside the five-yard line. You're going to have to beat them one way or the other. Well, the, the long drive did a few things. Obviously, it, it put points on the board. It gave the offense some confidence. It gave the defense a chance to catch their breath. Yeah, they need a breather out there. Those guys have been on the field all day long. So kind of get the offense, get rolling a little bit before halftime, get some confidence. You get the ball at halftime. So right now the key is get a three and out, prevent UCF from, from getting any type of points, whether it's a field goal or a touchdown, and you're getting the ball second half and see if you can go down there and continue this success with getting balls deep down the field. If you're just joining us and you've not seen UCF on offense, well, look, you've missed... 35 points, 28 of which the offense put up. But this is a fun offense. It's essentially that Chip Kelly Oregon attack. Scott Frost was part of that. They innovated. They changed, obviously. It's all across college football right now. And uh, you add in the athletes that they've got here, the uh, especially the influx of talent from Florida. And, and this thing is really humming right now. It's fun to watch. Right now they have plenty of time. A minute 41 on the clock. They have all three timeouts. Let's get a two-minute uh, drive rolling a little bit. Got plenty of time. They're able to run the ball. They're able to pass the ball in this situation. Adrian Killens to the 30. And this is all good practice for them. They have never been in a situation where they've had to come back. They've had to have a two-minute drill. So this is all good practice, good repetition for a lot of young receivers, a lot of freshmen out there that need to learn what it takes to play even faster than what they already do. Second down and five. That one is caught by Emmanuel Logan Green. It's a great point because 4-0 are the Knights. Remember, they had a, a game canceled because of a hurricane against Georgia Tech. But they've blown out everyone they've played. On the road, they blew out Maryland by four touchdowns. Blew out Memphis. For the sideline, Traquan Smith. Yeah, this is great for this offense. A lot, Like I said, a lot of young guys, a lot of receivers, a lot of the young QB still. Every chance you get to, get to get better, whether it's any phase of the game, and the two-minute drill, they're going to have to do it at some point this season. Yeah, look, they've, they've not been in a situation where they're down late in a game and have to drive for a, a tying or a go-ahead score. I think the Knights may have had too many men on the field. Yeah, that's a young guy, Otis Anderson, trying to run on late right there. There it is. That's a late flag. Illegal substitution. Offense. It's a five-yard penalty. Second down. And this is a great example. Young guys running the two-minute drill, knowing when to get on, when to get off, what personnel is in there. So, like I said, this is great for these young guys to kind of see this. Matthew Wright, field goal kicker. You see his career long is at 50. Mid to low 50s. That's the uh, target or the max from uh, Scott Frost for field goal range. Milton's throw on the money and a really terrific catch 
on the sideline. Otis Anderson does a little bit of everything for this team, and he does it all quite well. Yeah, making up for his coming on the field late. Does a great job right there, toe tapping and dragging. That might have been good in the NFL game. Now, the offensive coordinator. For three, offense, number 79. Five yard penalty, first down. Offensive coordinator for UCF was a terrific wide receiver at Stanford for Bill Walsh, Troy Walters, and a teammate of Scott Frost. Wide receiver coach in a lot of good places, Texas A&M, Colorado. And he's had both Otis Anderson and Adrian Killens, running backs by trade. He's turned them into slot receivers and, and really good weapons. Yeah, you, with that kind of skill, you got to find creative ways to get those guys the ball any way possible. That one on the mark. That's Smith. Traquan Smith to the 15, and he's out of bounds. He may be a little baller, but Mackenzie Milton throws a big spiral. And that's a dart right there. He's got, he got to get crushed at the end. Hopefully it's just a win knocked out of him. 37 yards on the throw. You can see right there kind of ping pong between the two guys. Milton looked like he got the wind knocked out of him. He's pointing at his stomach. I think that's all it is. He gets hit. Maybe a little punch to the gut, knock the wind out of him. Just going to take a playoff, hopefully, and, and get back in there and finish this drive. But it was a beautiful throw. Little dig route about 18 yards across the middle of the field to Trey Quan Smith. Catch it, and it's another playmaker that does amazing jobs with the ball in his hands. Well, it, it looked like Alex Turner, 94, from the front may have got that arm or that elbow down into the midsection. Milton stays in, fires to the end zone, and overthrows everybody. That one uh, ended up in a cabana back there behind the end zone. They have cabanas here at the Spectrum Stadium in the end zones. Good yeah. place for a party or a group. Well, I think Cassie's down there right now hanging out. We haven't heard from her in yeah, about... Yeah, I think that's why. I think we're going to get a hold on the outside. Flag is down in the end zone. There's two, actually, in the end zone. Yeah, Sun on the outside, kind of holding in the end zone, not letting the guy run his corner. Holding. holding. Defense, Defense, number 42. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Javon Sutton. You can't do that. You can't grab him. Got to let him run his route. That's an easy call for the officials right there, right in front of his face. First and goal at the three. Taj McGowan in the backfield. And this is McGowan, and he is in. Three yards and a touchdown. And boy, is this offense humming. You see this offensive line. I mean, look at these guys just pushing the defensive line, the linebackers back into the end zone. First contact is until he gets to the one-yard line. That's a heck of a two-minute drive right there. That's great practice for these young guys to be able to run a two-minute drive, move it up and down the field with still 40 seconds to spare. I mean, that was impressive to see those guys kind of do their thing out there. Well, they're the highest scoring team in the NCAA, averaging over 47 points a game. Tonight, they've hit 42. Now, the defense did chip in with seven of those. But so 35 in the fourth, first half. 35 that, in the first half. That's still pretty dang good. I mean, this offense, you turn on it every week, they're rolling. I had the opportunity to watch them. I was down covering the game the first week of the season versus FIU, and the same thing. Big play after big play. A lot of explosive playmakers on the offensive side of the football. And also the defense, you got to give the defense credit. They're doing a great job defensively this entire season of just getting the ball back to their offense with great field position, getting turnovers, things like that. 
Offense has been a playing a lot of football for these guys in four, now five games. There have been some great starts by group of five teams. The group of five is the non-power conferences, and they're playing for a bid to a New Year's Six game. UCF looks uh, every bit as good as their ranking right now. Remember, though, they go on the road and play at Navy next week. We've got that game on CBS Sports Network. So who is off to the great start in the group of five? Well, the yeah, USF's look good this year. Kind of had a slow start to start the year off. Obviously, they're 5-0, but offensively wasn't the fireworks that you're expecting. San Diego State's been on fire. All these teams have some big games to go till the season. So we'll see... If anyone has a bad game, falters a little bit, obviously UCF and USF will be playing each other at the end of the year, and that could be an exciting game between two teams that could be undefeated. And, and remember, it's not only resume and ranking at the end, but you have to win your conference. You do have to win your conference. And for these guys, they pretty much have to go undefeated, win your conference, and the way you, UCF's playing tonight. And we've got number 19, San Diego State at home against Boise State. That is coming up after this one. That should be a, a terrific football game. For UCF, too. West. For UCF, too. They got, a, they got a big bullseye on their back. They're not the 6-17 and 17 that everyone might have been expecting. I mean, this team's undefeated. They're playing great. So you're going to get the best from every team you play for the rest of the season now. Cirque now at second down and eight. And the Pirates are going to keep it on the ground. That is how, and how has some yardage. One second on the clock. Now, ECU does have a timeout. They can take a timeout and take a shot here. 21 yards on the carry. Yeah, you get a big quarterback there, Thomas Sirk. Big arm. Give him some time and let him, let, him, let him launch this thing. Let's see if he can make it to the end zone. Give these guys a 50-50 shot. See if they can maybe sneak seven before we get into halftime. And remember, ECU gets the football to start the second half. Now, look, it's 42 to 14. With Scotty Montgomery trying to keep his team up. Let's see. Now, look, you've thrown plenty of Hail Marys in your day at Plant High School in Tampa and Georgia, I'm sure, as well. The key, the key for Cirque right now is this is the only time that you're allowed to watch the defensive front. You always try to keep your eyes downfield, but right now, your job is just to buy four, five, six seconds for your seniors to get in the end zone. So keep your eyes on the defensive line, find a ways to hold on to the ball, and then just launch it. Defensively, I hate this. I hate when you rush three. My opinion, get after the quarterback, make him get out of his hands. Sirk in trouble, and he's set. Shaquem Griffin ran him down, and the first half ends with a sack at the 35-yard line. The offense was electric. The defense was suffocating. 42-14. After the break, we're headed back to our CBS Sports Network studio for the Verizon Halftime Report with Brent Stover, Houston Nutton, Christian Fourier.